million pounds worth of extra assistance. But all this cash is for emergency help, tents, food and clean water, not to fund any long-term recovery plan. The Boxing Day tsunami of 2004 generated more than a billion pounds worth of aid spending, but a later report backed by Bill Clinton said it took too long for money to reach some affected areas, and often that cash was wasted on projects like temporary housing that were never properly used. The public are, are keen to see results as quickly as possible. They're very concerned about the, the images that they're seeing about um, you know, people being suffering. Um, and so there's a temptation to give them shelter solutions as, as quickly as possible in, in terms of, of tents, flat pack houses. Um, however, these are often not appropriate for the, for the context that they're actually in. They, they may not be you know, earthquake resistant or, or um, hurricane resistant or, or simply suitable for tropical zones or, or whatever they're in. Across the other side of London, any talk of reconstruction means very little at the moment. Milagros Navarra has been working in the UK while her teenage children grow up in Tacloban in the Philippines. She has heard nothing from them since the storm hit on Friday. As a mother, really, I, it's really heartbreaking to, to see all those pictures and videos and I could picture and I've been questioning what about my children? What's the real condition of my children? We might now understand the scale of the disaster in the Philippines, but many of the stories of individuals and families have yet to be told. Well, Owen Bardi used to advise Tony Blair and now works at the Centre for Global Development. Ian Birrell's a contributing editor for the Daily Mail. Are you impressed by the reaction to this disaster? Yes, I think it shows the best of humanity that we want to give, we want to help. We what? could do it better, we could do yeah. it faster, but the fact that people are willing and to reach into their pockets and help other people on the other side of the world one is impressive. Question, one can't question the impulse, but are you impressed by the mechanism? I think we need to do it better. We've had the lessons of the tsunami in 2004, we've had the lessons of Haiti, we haven't learned the lessons quickly enough about how to make sure this aid really reaches people efficiently and quickly, but it does reach people and it does help them. What do you make of it? I think the question isn't uh, should we help them, the question is how do we help them, mm. and too often the mantra of the aid industry is really that uh, we can do it better next time, and that's always what they've been saying. They've been saying it for 50 years, well, maybe going back to Well, maybe they're consistently getting better. But unfortunately, you look at what happened in Haiti, and it was an absolute terrible what happened, where the wishes of local people were completely ignored, and uh, there were meetings being held. There were so many people involved now in the aid industry, because, of course, it's not just Britain, but it's every single Western country and increasingly the developing world. You get hundreds and hundreds of groups flocking in and causing chaos on the ground. Well, what are you Haiti. suggesting? Well, I think the suggestion is, first of all, not for these... A lot of these, these groups are basically corporate interests dressed up as Mother Teresa. And what they need to do is stop thinking about their raising money and stop thinking about what they want to do and actually start yeah. listening to people on the ground. He's in right. Haiti, yeah. in Haiti even, let's point out, there were meetings being held without anyone there from Haiti. And 0.6% of the money actually, according to Owen's own organisation, went to interest from Haiti, whereas 40%, according to the Prime Minister, was spent on those supplying the aid, living in expensive flats and buying expensive cars. There are aspects that not of help this people. that you know to be true. I know from friends who are connected with charities that it's a contest. Who's going to be there first? Who's going to get the, the, the headlines on the television? Who's therefore going to get the money in? Well, Ian says we don't make any improvements, but I was in Ethiopia in the 1980s, the famous Michael yeah. Burke video and, yeah. and all that. And I was there again in 2009, 2010, when there was another drought. Mm. And the big difference in 2009, 2010, you didn't see people going to relief centres to get fed. Why? Mm. Because there was a safety net in place that enabled Ethiopians to, to receive food and money in their villages and in their towns in the face of a, a failed rains. Mm. That's the kind of progress that's made when a country is able to put in place its own resilience, its own systems to enable its people to stay where they are rather than to have this kind of disaster. So things do get better and we've had the most remarkable progress across the developing world. And could would... they get faster, better? Yes, they could. Yeah. And one of the things that should happen in this kind of situation is aid agencies, the, both the international organizations and the NGOs, should be more transparent about what they're doing. And so that we can like see where the money is yeah. going and so that everybody can sure. plan and know where it is that, that the needs are great. And something like the DEC is actually coordination of 
aid effort, isn't it? Well, it's, that's a coordination of raising the money, and yeah. it, to some extent it coordinates how the money is spent. But the crucial thing, and we didn't see this in Haiti, and we need to see it in the Philippines, is that the money as it gets spent is being spent in a way that everybody mm. can see who's doing what, because that's the only way that people will be able to work out on the ground where, where they can contribute. And in the 21st century, it doesn't make sense that we don't know how this aid is being spent. Have you any thought about the different ways, the different ways we react to different disasters? Well, clearly, um, there is huge sympathy for something like this, which is so strong televisually. But you look in the Central African Republic and right now, and there's 400,000 displaced people, and we're not seeing the aid groups all rushing to raise money for that because it's not going to make them lots of money in the way that this sort of thing will. Uh, there is a huge difference in how they approach it. They go, the aid caravan moves on from one of these disasters to the other, often leaving a mess behind them. I mean, you look in Haiti, $9 billion was spent on a country of 10 billion people. And still, at the end of last year, while the, American, while the Red Cross had more, than had more than 300 million pounds in their coffers raised, there was still, that was twice what had been spent on permanent housing, and still about 400,000 people were still in tents. It's obscene, and actually, my stomach turned when I saw the activities and the, some of the things that people were saying in Haiti while the Haitians themselves were being frozen out of any decision making and basically having their lives often ruined once again. It's no, it's no coincidence yeah. that the mayor called it the second earthquake and the second earthquake was the arrival of thousands of these aid agencies you trying to raise money. You seem to be agreeing with him. Well, I think I disagree with the idea that this is all about good television and a caravan of aid agencies. If I was struck by a typhoon, I would want somebody to come and help me, to give me food and water and shelter. And that's what people are doing. And the idea that aid workers are there because they think it's glamorous when they're working right. round the clock in terrible conditions to help fellow human beings, I, I think that's obscene. So yes, I think we could do it better. I also want to see the aid system work better. So I'm agreeing that there are problems. But the idea that that means that the, the whole exercise uh, should be dis disregarded as a, as a caravan of people doing it in their own interests. That's just cynicism. Right. OK, thank you both very much. Thank you. There are unmistakable signs that the NHS is gearing up for a crisis this winter. Downing Street has let it be known that the Prime Minister is getting personally involved in preparations. Like the leaves turning, warnings of a looming calamity in accident and emergency departments come round most autumns. But this year they're being taken more seriously than some other occasions as 